Hello, everybody. Happy January 19th, 2021. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, I'm pleased to, he- to have rather the running back and defensive back coach for Coggenshaw, Brett Sparico. Brett, it's a pleasure to be able to have you on, man. Hey, thanks a lot, Chris, for having me on. You know, I think first and foremost, I understand it's a tough time as far as because football was officially for the second time canceled. And now I saw a lot of photos as far as people just saying, you know, kind of wishing off the seniors and thanking them for all they've done for the program. I just want to ask, how are you dealing with everything? Because I'm sure there's a lot of emotion going on. Yeah, I mean... Chris, ever since this thing started in in March, it's been kind of crazy that we're at this point right now. Um, But I'll tell you what, I was really proud of our guys throughout the whole thing. I mean, this is going back before the the shutdowns. In February, we had, you know, 30 plus plus kids in the weight room, which is a great thing to have, especially with a class S uh, co-op team like we had. And... um, you know, they, they handled it in a very professional way as a, especially as a kid being like 16, 17, like they were, it's a lot different perspective than what we could see. You know what I mean? Going through the motions, being in high school and stuff like that. I actually saw um, one, one player that uh, works at a restaurant nearby, just picked up a burrito. And he asked me like, is this going to, do you think this is going to go on in the fall? And I'm just like, we got to be positive, man. I think, I think hope's on the horizon, but in terms of the, uh, the seniors for last year, trust me, everybody feels for them. I know you do too, but um, the, the one thing that I could say in a, you know, a bright spot in a way is I feel like almost a majority of our senior class is going to be a, Um, playing football or be a part of football one way or the other. I mean, we have a ton of kids right now looking to play college ball, which is great. Um, Even for the kids that that don't go NCAA, you have, um, you know, club football at a lot of universities. Hey, I I played intramurals. I, I didn't play NCAA football. And I'll tell you what, intramurals are just as intense as High, high school sports I'll, I'll tell you that so and even for for some other kids that don't go the the college route I feel like they'll be a coach they'll play a rec league I, I just feel like we had football players not just kids that played football which was what I was really proud of the senior class this year you know we'll get into as far as what was missed and how much, you know, I, I, you know, I talked to a bunch of coaches and a lot of them spoke very highly and were not excited to face Cog and Shog if they were, but they wanted to see how that offense, which I'm sure we'll get into as well, because very prolific, you know, with yourself, coach Eagle and so on, on the staff, but let's talk about yourself a little bit, because that's why I have you here. Kind of just yeah. give me a synopsis as far as kind of your younger years and also you playing football. Well, ever since I put on the pads, probably in sixth grade, um, I've just loved the sport. Um, it was funny, back in sixth grade, I was a little, little pudgy kid. I was playing, you know, offensive line, didn't really have a sense of, you know, the game yet and just kind of, you know, was still learning. But the following year, I grew a little bit. The coaches saw that, hey, this little guard is is actually kind of big now and fast. Maybe we should let him uh, run the football. So ever since then, I I was a running back. I I love playing it, and uh, you know, I would say I I just I just love the game. I've also had some ups and downs with the game. My uh, freshman year at OSW, I made the varsity team. I was going to be like a special teamer, but I was so pumped to do that. In the first game, in my first varsity play, I, I tore two ligaments in my my left knee, which, trust me, I was shocked, you know. But I was about two years removed. I had surgery that year in 2010. In November, once they diagnosed it, it was actually a PCL tear, which is a little bit different than the usual ACL tears. Um, so I rehabbed that 
and I missed pretty much my whole freshman year and then sophomore year. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the field. I ended up going the, the fall baseball route. So I was two years removed from really running the football. But, you know, by the time junior year came around, I had a, you know, full winter to, uh, you know, rehab, get, you know, physically strong, be ready to take those big hits um, out of the backfield. And, you know, I was very fortunate. I had two healthy years, my junior and uh, senior year. And then after that, you know, I kind of decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to look at schools, but I'm not going to look into football, which is something I kind of regret because, you know, like I was just telling you, I, you know, intramurals was fun. I kind of wish I could have played, you know, club because you actually get the pads on and everything. But you know, I was content with it, especially through those four years of high school, going through ups, ups and downs with rehab, so on and so forth. So, you know, I, you know, graduated. I went to Roger Williams University in, in uh, Bristol, Rhode Island, where I became a marketing major. And I graduated um, in the spring of 2018. And how I started to I'll be honest with you. I didn't expect to to coach this, this this early. I always I always wanted to be a coach. You know, I was always thinking like, you know, I'll be, be you know thirty five, be able to you know coach a little league thirty five, maybe youth football, and then maybe you know high school one day. But I was just fortunate with my job, and you know, when I was looking at jobs on LinkedIn, um, Eric Becker, who was the head coach for Cogginshaw at the time, you know asked me to be the running backs coach and I was so pumped to do it and it, it was just a perfect thing because I never expected you know graduating college to to find a job where I can actually do it I'm not an education major I'm marketing and sales that's kind of my thing but I've been very you know blessed to be able to do both so you know I've been with Cog and Chog since then um, I know we've had some different coaches, but um, I really wanted to stay for the kids and kind of create as much stability as possible, especially with our, our senior class we just had that I think had, I think, three, three coaches in four years. I could be wrong, but, um, you know, create that stability. A lot of the assistants stayed on too, which was a, which was a very good thing. So, I mean, all that kind of led to uh where i am today and i'm i'm still very happy to be you know at cog and chog as you were reaching out to as far as looking at opportunities to be able to coach when did it was it something where it was just you woke up one day and you were like you know what i think i could coach or was it something that kind of started maybe in high school or maybe you know the early years of at, at college at roger williams and it kind of just grew as the days went on, because like you said, you weren't playing football as far as at the NCAA level. And I feel like you can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like not playing probably grew that hunger to want to get back to the game somehow. And coaching was the next best thing. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And I'll go back to, um, I, I mean, my, my dad, was a coach of mine for, you know, a lot of years when I was growing up. And, you know, I always looked up to my dad. I still do today. Um, but the one thing I really, I'm really grateful for him. And trust me, everybody else is grateful for this too, is once I was on the field, he was my coach, not my dad, you know, for that, you know, either the six, seven inning baseball game, you know, or the basketball, you name it. So I would say he was definitely somebody that I looked up to. Um, you know, when I was injured, I, I looked up to my head coach, Rudy Bagos, who's the uh, head coach at East Lime. Um, so I, I think it was more the fact that I had some, some really good role models. And you're right, during a time where you're injured or something, the only thing you could do is kind of sit back and, and, you can't do anything physically. Everything's happening mentally. You know what I mean? So I guess in a way the X's and O's kind of, kind of clicked with me through those years. And then you're right at Roger Williams. Um, 
I always had it in the back of my mind a little bit. Um, I was always looking at, at the film on Huddle when I was back in high school. Unfortunately, with OSW, you know, they had a lot of head coaches. So eventually all, all my film was kind of thrown out the window. You know what I mean? Gets deleted over time. Um, but I would say all of that kind of led me to coach. Like I said, the biggest thing was I didn't think I had the ability with my future job to be able to. And the fact that, that I am, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm forever grateful. You know, that conversation that you had with coach uh, Eric Becker, who at the time was the head coach at Coggenshagen, I felt like he kind of helped lay the foundation and really allowed future coaches, coach Eagle and whoever else, hopefully coach Eagle stays there for forever but I'm just saying you know obviously coaches come and go and there's movement and everything just like players are but I feel like coach Becker giving you that opportunity and saying hey I need a running backs coach and for him to be able to have that instant connection with you I felt like as a coach you had to feel pretty happy with because you weren't going into an unknown situation you felt like you already knew him before you really even knew coach Becker yes you're right Chris I mean I can't thank um coach Eric Becker enough I mean he gave me my my first opportunity to coach and I and I'm forever you know grateful of him and um really the the big thing um with Eric is he he wasn't my football coach at OSW you, at, you know so he kind of saw me from the sidelines and you know in the classroom you know in in high school and to think of to me for that position was, was huge a few years back. And again, it, it was tough because, you know, last year when he went to Adam Killingworth, I was just torn. But again, when I had that conversation with him, you know, when I stayed at Cog and Chog, um, you know, I told him, I, I just want to do it for, for the kids. You know, I want to create as much stability as possible. And, you know, I hope one day, you know, we can coach together again. We actually were going to coach uh, middle school baseball for Westbrook last, last spring, which would have been a nice, fun thing to do after, you know, everything. But, you know, unfortunately, that's when March rolled around and the only things we were able to do for, for that team was uh, um, do a few Google Meets few little Google classrooms, which was, which was tough. So I hope one way or another, I could, I could, uh, you know, coach with them again. So, you know, as you, you know, your major at Roger Williams being a marketing guy, I mm -hmm. almost feel like in some ways to equate that to coaching, because like you said, in sales and everything, you have to be quick, fast paced. Everything has got to move because you have to be able to be mm -hmm. slick with your words, but also think along the way and if you get stuck somewhere that could set a lot of things back as far as your day because you got to keep going I feel like as a coach mm -hmm. it's kind of the same way because as you know especially because you're at multiple positions coaching you know you have to make sure that you're keeping up you're going you're quick with the kids okay what was I doing wrong you're doing this you're doing that I feel like that's kind of how I can equate the two yeah you're right and if you compare like football to baseball it's it's totally different. I feel like I could take a few more breaths sitting on the the bench um, in terms of you know baseball, footballs you know especially in practice it's very fast paced. Um, you know we we try to keep a pretty you know compact schedule while also getting things done, and especially with the defensive backs I had you know the last few years I've had a, a huge group of defensive backs so it's a lot to manage, trying to, you know, split, split guys, young guys and old guys up, try to do some pass scally, things like that. While also, you know, having a portion of the field and so on. So you're right in terms of that, it's a lot of moving parts, but again, you just got to take a deep breath and, and know, know what the objective is that day. You know, during your time with Coggenshaw, and you know, I, I I talked to Coach Eagle and was just like, hey, just just tell me about this Brett, you know, this Brett guy real quick because I'm having him come on, and he spoke very glowingly of you. And one of the many great things he said was the connection that you have with the players. And I think any great coach 
And there's obviously outliers who are so-and-sos and never got along with many. I mean, Belichick may get along with a couple people as far as players are concerned, but I feel like he has this wall where it's him mm-hmm. and then, you know, business and pleasure. You know what I'm saying? But I mm-hmm. feel like with you, Brett, to be able to have that connection because you're still so young and to be able to have that communication, you may see something different than an older coach may just because he has to worry about so many things. But with you, you can pick it up instantly. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a lot of things. Um, obviously I'm, I'm a young guy, so I feel like a lot of, a lot of the kids, you know, gravitate towards me. Um, but for me in terms of what I hope to accomplish with them is to help them have a better high school experience than what I had or so on or so forth. So I'm always looking out for everybody, you know, especially beginning of practice. I, I really like the, the time to, uh, really connect with the guys, but, um, you know, once practice starts, I'm just like, just like any other coach where, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you do this. If this, if coach DeFilio, coach Gerritsen, coach Eagle, whoever doesn't allow it, you know, there's kind of, you know, when, when practice is on, you know, the fingers snap and it's, it's go time, you know, but I definitely enjoy connecting with the kids. Like I told you, Chris, it was a huge reason why I stayed at Cog and Chog. Um, so it was actually a reason why I actually moved one of a few reasons why I moved to uh, Middletown because I, I really want to be a part of this community and uh, hopefully for the years to come. Now, looking at Coach Eagle, who I feel awful for him because I'm sure he was just itching to, to you know, want to play with the new toys, you know, to <laughs> with the amount of weapons. And I had him on again when I started this podcast and he and I talked for maybe 25 minutes just about all the talent that was on this Cog and Shog team. And, you know, just take me into your first conversation with Coach Eagle when he was hired. I was just going to bring that up, Chris, because when everything was going on where, you know, Coach Eagle just got hired, you know, and Coach Coach Becker went to HK for a little bit, I, I – you know, I told you I was torn. I didn't know what's going to happen, that type of thing. But um, I had a great conversation with Coach Eagle uh, probably a week after he got hired. And I'll leave at this. I think we talked for an hour and a half. I mean, just, just, about, just about everything. And one thing I do admire of him going back to my playing days is, is he, played, he coached um, some very good Morgan football teams who – I unfortunately had a play against Thanksgiving day, um, my junior and senior year. And unfortunately I was on the the wrong end of the stick there. Um, But one thing that stayed in my head because I really didn't know coach Eagle until, you know, this year and we started talking and stuff like that. But I do remember, you know, I, I felt like I didn't play the best game, the last game of my, my senior year against Morgan and, you know, once the clock at zero, it was kind of hitting me like, oh, I, I could have did this or I can't believe it's over. And Coach Eagle came across the field to find me and, and you know, he gave me a, a handshake, put an arm on my shoulder and said, you're one heck of a football player. And like that just stuck with me, you know. So between a combination of things like that, um, you know, I, I really thought you know, and still do. Um, Coach Eagle is the perfect fit at Cog and Chog. So, I mean, between everything, it, it, it kind of, between the kids and him, I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm staying here, you know? See, I don't think it's a coincidence that from that moment and then have it be just some odd years later to have him end up being in the same spot as far as you're a Cog and Chog, he ends up being there. I feel like it's kind of like a full circle kind of thing there. And to be able to have, I mean, you mentioned a lot of the great coaches, uh, Coach Gerritsen as well, who 
his son is a specimen in and of itself. He's a mm-hmm. gigantic target, a big tight end. He was one of the uh, young men that Coach Eagle and I raved about. You know, Jackson Moore was another, the mm-hmm. Fiella twin, you know, they're just, you know, one of them, I think Evan has like 21 offers. I yep. Mean, I mean, I, give me a break. <laughs> I know? was going to say, I feel like every time I, uh, you know, press the Twitter button on my phone, I see offer, offer, you know, from a lot of our kids. I just, I'm, I'm definitely happy for them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, man. And again, I go back to what I said. I feel awful for, you know, the coaches, but also the players, because I, you know, I, I told coach Eagle, because a lot of people I feel like, and this is kind of what I want to get to next. I feel like a lot of people assume, oh, Coggenshuk, oh, Pequa, oh, they're not, they don't play against anybody. They don't compete. They're just going to get shellacked by St. Joe's and class S or yada, 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 so on and so forth. But the point I think is this team felt different. I felt like there could have been something that could have happened very special because it seemed like the players and the coaches all were on the same page. And I felt like they could have proved a lot of people wrong this year. I feel, I feel the same way, Chris. I mean, this just goes back to, you know, winter workouts last year. The fact that we consistently had 30 plus, sometimes 40 kids downstairs working out is really what you want to, what you want to see. I'll tell you, tell you this, you know, either different years, my time at OSW, we didn't have 40 kids in the weight room. You know, the, the teams like the North Brantford's and the, the Valleys are the teams that have those, you know, 40 kids in the weight room, which is a very good thing. And you, you, you know, the last 10 years, you know, Valleys had a few, you know, runs at the state championship, you know, North Brantford. And we really felt like this was our time to, you know, make that leap. Um, so it, it definitely was a special team that we had, but we also got to remember all the great things those kids did the year before. I mean, between, I wish I could name all the kids right now, between like guys like Sebi Manning, Dean Fontano, Fiala Brothers, uh, AJ DeFilio, Tyler Gerritsen, um, the list goes on and on. I'm sorry guys for, for some that I'm, I'm not saying right now, but basically every senior we had, you know, led from the top down and, and really got all the kids to buy in, especially the, you know, sophomores and juniors in the workouts, you know, from winter, you know, winter on, you know, they really sold it to all those kids, which, which was a really special thing to see. And, you know, I hope it, when we get the opportunity to, you know, be able to be allowed those workouts. I, I hope our senior class has, has, you know, pushed them into the right direction where now those younger guys know it's my turn to be Evan. It's my turn to be, you know, X, Y, and Z, you name it. So, I mean, you put all that together and it really was a, a special team that, you know, I, I wish I could, you know, have another practice with all those guys again, but I'm sure I'll, you know, see them in the future. And I want them to, you know, stay together as a football family. You know, even when you're, when you're graduated in high school, you know, you still want to be a part of that, that family. So even when you're, you know, home for the home games, you know, all those, all those kids and coaches want to, want to see those kids that graduated, you know? So I hope we're starting to create a culture where it's going to stick and be consistent, which I strongly believe that it's going to be. I think the culture is going to be strong just for various reasons, because of the staff, because of the, you know, because of the players. And that kind of leads me into my next question. How has the communication been with the players? Because I've spoke to various coaches who have told me they've lost some guys, they've lost kids. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how they're being. They've had some kids who they never thought would say, coach, I'm quitting. And they've quit on them. So mm-hmm. how has it been? Because I'm sure it's one thing to not play football. And I understand all that comes with that. But COVID has affected a lot as far as families, loss of jobs, added stress, anxiety, mental, just a lot of mental, you know what, going through. So yeah. how has it been? 
Um, I think it's been a lot better than those other teams, Chris. I mean, we do have a Google Classroom where they can do at-home workouts, and a lot of kids are active in that, which I'm I'm very happy about. Um, but this goes back to to the fall, Chris, um, because once the news was breaking, you know, I would say September when you know it was kind kind of the balls were rolling where the kids were starting to realize that they weren't going to have games in September. And then, you know, this and that happened. I told coach, all the coaches that I was really worried that we were going to show up to one of our first practices of the fall and have like, you know, 18 kids, two seniors, something like that. And our enrollment was so good, Chris. We had, you know, we still had almost a full roster at all those practices even knowing that there's probably a good shot that there weren't going to be any games that was a true testament to you know what this team I think is going to be down the road and I'll leave at this when we had our little you know flag football league between OSW Morgan and us we were able to field two teams because we had the depth those those other teams you know had guys that once the the announcement was out that there wasn't going to be any games see you later i'm i'm hitting the xbox or the ps4 you know so i i think it was a true testament to who those kids are that we have and i told them the last day that um we were together we had like a senior day with everybody i told them that you guys showed us that you guys aren't kids that play football you guys are football players, which which is a huge thing because you showed they showed how much they, they cared and and I think we're still gonna have a productive winter and once we can get some more answers on on what we can do, I think I think we're gonna have a great spring that that leads into a uh, to a solid fall. So I'm very confident in uh, at least with our team. You know, I think I think everyone who's a football fan of just high school, college, pro, et cetera, is hoping that there can be football again in Connecticut as far as on the high school level. You know, mm-hmm. coaches alike, you know, I'm hoping for it selfishly to broadcast, but also, too, to see stories like Hagenshog, you know, like Valley Regional, who, you know, Coach King has done a fantastic job with that program and just mm-hmm. what he's been able to build there for the what feels like decades he's been there. You know, but, you know, coach, we've just about run out of time, but I really do appreciate you coming on to take some time out and talk about the Coggenshog program. You know, Coach Eagle I've had on was great, and you just matched him. You were just as good, man. Hey, I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to talk, and I'm very – I have very positive thoughts of where this co-op pro- program is going to go between, you know, East Hampton, Hale Ray, and uh, – the Durham and Middlefield. We'll see what can happen, but you know what? Like you said, Coggenshog has a bright future ahead. Now, wrap things up, wrap things up here rather on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent, and I'm on a journey to find them all. Have a good one, everybody, and be well.